Circular motion. This is a concept that's explored in the first module, the first topic of HSC physics. And it's basically the second part of the module. So the first part was on projectile motion, the second part's on circular motion. Um, making the, a video on Newton's first law while driving sort of inspired me to make another video on uh, circular motion and centripetal force. So there's the idea of centripetal force. Centripetal force is basically a force which keeps an object in circular motion, going in a circle. Uh, mathematically, it's quite a simple formula. If you have some object with mass m, measured in kilograms, moving in a circle of radius r, measured in meters, at some velocity v in meters per second, there will be a force directed towards the center of the circle, of the circular motion, called the centripetal force. And there are three applications explored in HC physics. The first one is typically uh, a mass on a string, so if you have a string and a mass at an end, at the end like a, a little ball, and you whirl it around, that's, that's circular motion. And the, the centripetal force in this case is the tension in the string. It's the tension force directed towards the center of the circular motion. Number two is a car going around a bend, which I'm going to demonstrate now, uh, or a, a roundabout. And the centripetal force in this case is supplied by the kinetic frictional force between the tires and the road. I had a student ask me yesterday this, um, why not static ball? Because static only applies, as the name suggests, to objects that are stationary. Okay, what, what I'm doing right now, my car's not moving, stationary. So the static frictional force applies between the tires and the road, keeping it in place. When anything's, when an object's moving, that's when you get kinetic energy and you've got kinetic static friction kicking in. And the third application typically explored is a satellite orbiting a planet like the Earth. And in this case, the centripetal force is the gravitational force provided by the Earth. So I'm now going to show you how circular motion applies to a car going around a bend, or a roundabout in this case. So approaching the roundabout, turning right, you notice my body is making sure it's a very sharp turn. I'll explain what happens. So the, the basic physics is this. There's a tangential, what's called a tangential or linear velocity at every point along the turn that I'm turning on the roundabout. And this is easy to picture if you've got like a string, a mass on a string, if you're whirling it around. If you let go at any instant, it'll fly off in a straight line. Okay, the mass will fly off in a straight line and that's because it's got a linear velocity. Linear means goes in, it's got a, a speed in a particular direction, which is in a straight line in this case. So that's why my body was sort of tilting the other way, just like in Newton's, the, the video I made on Newton's first law. It's basically inertia, in other words, as well. Inertia applies, my body wants to continue going in a straight line as opposed to turning uh, in the direction of the, the turn. And it's also worth noting that there's something called centripetal acceleration. I'm actually acceler accelerating. Even though the speed is um, constant, I'll try to make it as, as best I can, as, as constant as possible. Uh, the, velocity, the direction of um, my motion, was, the, the direction of motion is always changing. And if you've got changing um, direction, you've got acceleration occurring. So there's something called centripetal acceleration, and that's also directed towards the center of the circle, just like the centripetal force. And centripetal acceleration is just the velocity squared divided by the radius of the circular motion. And it's worth noting as well that the centripetal force and the linear velocity are perpendicular. They're always at right angles to each other around uh, a circle, a circle in circular motion. And so that's how circular motion works for a car around a bend.